Hi everyone and welcome to this short video which introduces the new EI4S. In this video we will be looking at how to find the information you are looking for using the greatly improved EI4S menu structure. We will also examine some of the new features which are available exclusively in EI4S such as the new version comparison tool which allows you to easily view changes made to standards. Finally, we will look briefly at how to search for information and filter the results. The subscriber homepage has been completely redesigned to enable users to see at a glance the latest news, the most recent documents to be added to EI4S, and a table of contents for all the standards and other EI4S content is now visible at all times. Browsing for information using the EI4S menu structure has been made simpler and more intuitive. Our users told us that quick access to the standards themselves was a key requirement and so a fundamental design goal for the new EI4S was to ensure that wherever you are in the site, you are never more than three clicks away from any standard. So, for example, if I want to look at IFRS 3 as it stood 1st January 2013, the 2013 Blue Book version in other words, all I have to do is click on Blue Book 2013, then choose IFRS, then select IFRS 3, like so. Now I can see all the component parts of IFRS 3, and so I can dive straight into the illustrative examples, or the basis for conclusions, or of course into the standard itself. So this is the 2013 version of IFRS 3. What if I need to look at the 2014 version? Again, using the intuitive menu structure, which was developed after extensive consultation and testing with the IFRS customers, all it takes is three clicks to move from my present location to another standard. In this case, IFRS 3, as it had effect at the 1st of January 2014. All I need to do is select the 2014 Blue Book from the table of contents Choose IFRS and select IFRS 3 from the list. While we have the 2014 version of IFRS 3 in front of us, now would be a good time to run through some of the other features which have been added for this new release of EIFRS. Our users told us that intuitive navigation was critically important, but they also said that the standards themselves were at the centre of all the work they did with IFRS content and so it would be great if each standard could act as a hub for all the information which is relevant to that standard. And that's what we've done with this release. All documents which are directly relevant to IFRS 3 are grouped together on the related documents page. So, for example, if you were looking for an exposure draft which proposed amendments to IFRS 3, you'd find that ED listed here on the related documents page. Of course, you could also find that ED by going to the consultations area of the site and pulling up the list of 2014 exposure drafts. Now, now let's quickly hop back to IFRS 3, just three clicks away as before. There's a final element we haven't looked at yet in that hub, and that's the version comparison page. One of the things that emerged very clearly from our conversations with EIFRS customers, whether they were in practice or in business, was that keeping track of the differences between the current year version of a standard and the previous year version was critically important. Similarly, being able to make stakeholders aware of the differences between the current year version of a standard and the changes which are due to become mandatory the following year was another fundamentally important task. The new version of EFRS contains a unique standards comparison tool, which enables users to see at a glance the differences between the current year and previous year versions of the standard, and the current year and following year versions. So, we were just looking at IFRS 3 as it had effect at 1st of January 2014, and as at the 1st of January 2013. What, if any, were the differences between those two versions? It's really easy to get an answer to that using this new tool. If I choose the version comparison under IFRS 3, I can see a number of options listed. These are all the various components of the standard, the introduction, the standard itself, the basis for conclusions, and so on. So, I wanted to see the differences between 
CY and PY versions, all I need to do is click the appropriate link and I'm given a clearly marked up copy of the standard where inserted text is shown in green, whereas deleted text is shown in red strike through. Now, if I scroll down to the scope section, I can see that a new paragraph concerning acquisitions made by an investment entity was inserted with mandatory effect from 1st of January 2014. What about the differences between the current year version and the amendments that will be implemented for next year? All I need to do is go back to the version comparison page and choose the appropriate link. If I scroll down a little, I can see that a further, further change to the scope section will come into effect on the 1st of January 2015. Finally, before moving on to search, I did just want to very quickly show how these paragraphs from IFRS 3 are handled in the IFRS Foundation's Green Book publication. Once again, it's just a couple of clicks to get to that version of this standard, and here it is. The Green Book version provides rich annotation of all the standards, which are an invaluable aid, whether you are a student learning this material or an accountant and business tasked with implementing it. So, looking at that amendment to paragraph 2A, which comes into effect on the 1st of January 2015, I can see that there are handy definitions of key terms available if I mouse over like so. But also there's a reference here to the basis of conclusions, which provides some insights into the thinking behind that change. In this part of the video, I'll be looking at the search capabilities of the new EI4S. Most searches are one of two types, either a search for a specific document like IFRS 15 or the research for a concept like revenue recognition. If you're looking for a specific document, you may find it's easier to use browse because in the new EI4S, you're never more than three clicks away from any standard. So, for example, if you want to see the 2013 Blue Book version of IAS 8, I just click Blue Book 2013, choose IAS, and there's IAS 8. Similarly, if I want to see the Red Book version of IFRS 3 again, it's probably faster to browse to it than to search. Search really comes into its own as a way of finding concepts in the enormous EIFRS database. So, for example, imagine that I'm looking at last year's accounts and I'm particularly interested in the treatment of deferred tax. I'd also like to see some examples illustrating how deferred tax is handled in different contexts. So, to find information on deferred tax, I just start typing D E and the system prompts with a helpful drop down list of various concepts beginning with those letters. So, I'm going to choose deferred tax from that list and click search. So now we're presented with an initial list of the 507 documents from the current year and the previous year which match that query. A further 1,330 documents from earlier years are available if I need to look at them. On this occasion, I'm only interested in the standards as they had effect for 2013. So if I click 2013, there I narrow the results to only show documents from that year. Similarly, because I'm only interested in 2013, I don't need to see results from the Red Book and the Green Book from that year. I can filter the results to only show results from the 2013 Blue Book by clicking this filter here. So, with just a couple of clicks, we've filtered our long list of 500 plus documents down to a much more manageable 49 hits. However, we began this inquiry by saying that ideally we were looking for some examples to illustrate the treatment of deferred tax in different contexts. So what I'm going to do is enter the word examples in this box here. Any search I type into this box will only look through the current set of results. So I'm now looking in the just the 49 documents from the 2013 Blue Book, which match the terms deferred and tax. So now this list of documents matches the terms deferred tax and examples. 
There's one last filter I want to show you, and this is one that I find enormously helpful. We can see listed here all the standards which match the current search terms. So, as one might expect, IAS 12 is at the top of the list with six documents which match the search. But what I find particularly helpful is seeing all the other standards which match deferred tax and examples clearly identified. So, in this case here, seeing there are hits in IAS 36 impairment of assets brings up a document which is exactly what I was looking for. Some illustrative examples showing the treatment of deferred tax in another context. In this case, impairment of assets. That concludes this video. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.